Why should you care what happens here? And what's going to happen? Critical questions. How do dams alter river ecosystems? How can river quality affect lakes? Any river in the country, in the world, has three main purposes. One is to carry water from upstream to downstream. Two is to carry material from upstream to downstream. And three is to support the life that lives within it. And when you put a dam in, you significantly negatively impact all three of them, primarily number two. And so what you get is this dead zone right downstream of a dam because the only thing that's transported downstream of a dam is water. And it's not all the other critical components of life that are required for a world-class healthy river system. So when you pinch off an ecosystem like you've done here where you've constructed four dams, instead of having one large river system, now you've got fragments. Fish have the biggest impact because now you've disconnected populations. You've got genetics that don't refresh themselves. You've got fish that can't pass into certain stretches where maybe they've historically spawned. So it's a, it's a big deal when you fragment a river system like that. We have thousands of lakes in this region. We have one cold water river system that feeds the Grand Traverse Bay. 30% of the water in the bay comes from this river, 193 million gallons a day that feeds into the bay that everyone loves and cherishes comes through this river system. We have one cold water river system that feeds the Grand Traverse Bay. The quality of the water in this system is paramount to the quality of the water in our bay. The license for Brown Bridge Dam was set to expire. And in order to generate hydropower, you have to have a license. If you're the owner of a dam, you're required to comply with the dam safety regulations. Uh, engineering studies were done and it was discovered that these three hydropower producing facilities didn't have adequate spillway for the current regulations. And so in order to add that additional spillway capacity, they were looking at multi-million dollar projects. And the reason these dams don't produce electricity any longer is that it basically became uneconomical. The hydroelectric potential is the product of the amount of flow in the river and the height of the dams. These dams did not produce enough energy to power Traverse City. These facilities were about one megawatt a piece. That's 10,100 watt light bulbs. And our job is to have safe dams. And a big part of that dam safety is making sure that you have enough spillway so that when the flood comes, it goes around, over, or through the dam safely and doesn't cause the dam to fail. You've got a structure here that's 50 or 60 feet tall, impounding 80 or 90 acres of water upstream of a highly populated area. We've seen a number of extreme storm and flood events just over the past few years. If we had 20 inches of rain in a 24-hour period here on the Boardman River system, it's likely that every one of these dams would fail and starts heading into Boardman Lake and downstream into Traverse City. So thousands of folks, hundreds of hours in meetings, got together and looked at 84 different options and decided on this system, the best thing to do was remove three of the dams and modify the fourth. And I think that the environmental aspects of the Boardman had a voice through all of the environmental experts that participated in the project. And it had a voice above and beyond the environmental aspects. It had a voice that also incorporated human uses, so the social uses, the recreational aspects, the tourism aspects, and in order to sustain not only the environmental aspects of the Bourbon River into the future, but also 
serve as an environmental foundation to sustain and enhance the economic prosperity of the region. There's going to be a flood. We backed the car into the driveway. We took a few values. Stay with us. Yeah. Something unexpected is about to happen. We were ready to make a run for it. To study dam removal challenges in your classroom, visit IntoTheOutdoors.org.